are we live it's it looks like we're live but i don't see anything showing up give me a quick moment everyone yeah it's here i've got the same thing every week same thing every week i should know by now right Alrighty, let me share it in a facebook group and let me go live on instagram There we go. Do, 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 do. Live on Instagram, live on Facebook. And we're going to continue with setting up your class schedule, setting up the space in which you teach, really just your business organization skills. But today we're going to speak about money back and cancellation policies. I'm really excited, like always. <laughs> And um, the reason I'm going to speak about these things is because once you are attracting people to your classes and people come to your classes, it's possible as well that people have to cancel, right? So let me take you back through the training sessions that we had in the last few weeks so that if you are creating your business right now or if you are creating your own self-employed yoga teaching career in the last weeks we spoke about your setting up your class schedule how to start your digital yoga teaching journey and how to attract students to your classes how to fill up your classes online so that was the last training that was last week and i shared with you there what doesn't work when you want to attract new people in your to your classes and what you want to do instead right so there's four things that do really not work and four things you want to do instead so if you missed that go to our instagram feed or on facebook you can find it at enga unite in our facebook group and on our Facebook page, all of these training sessions will be on the podcast very soon as well. So you can listen or you can watch them all in a row to really inform yourself on what it takes to set up your own online career. And today is all about money back cancellation policies, because it's important that you consider these aspects. So after you have created your own class schedule and you set up your space to teach and you start attracting people, it's wise to also establish your business politics. Maybe not after, but just before that, just to cover yourself, to protect yourself. Now, in June 2022, last year, I was live with Corey Sterling. Corey Sterling is a lawyer and someone that knows everything about liability waivers, your terms and conditions. And we spoke about these things in an interview. And you can find that interview on our Instagram, Instagram feed as well. It was in June 2022. If you're watching this now or you're watching the replay, scroll down a little bit. But I realized that we never spoke about what happens if a student cancels or what happens, what do you do when someone asks for the money back? Now, in my experience, four years in business, four years in the yoga business, this has happened to me twice. So in my experience, it doesn't happen very often. But when it happens, you want to be pre prepared and you want to protect yourself from all these types of legal problems. So it's possible that a student gets sick, right? Or that they unexpectedly have to, they unexpectedly have to change their plans, which means that they cancel their class last minute. It's also possible that your students expect something different from your services or from your classes, or that they are not entirely happy with the results they have. All of these things can cause unnecessary obstacles if you haven't set up a refund and a cancellation policy, right? So let's have a look today at what type of things you can consider to cover yourself, to protect yourself from these types of things to happen, unexpected or unfortunate circumstances. 
First of all, in the comments, what are your policies right now? Write down for me. What are your policies right now? Do you have them? Right? Do you have them and do you want to revise them? Or is this something that you have not yet established and want to do now? And want to do before you start teaching online or create services online? What are your policies? Write them in the comments. I'm really curious. Righty, so let me drink some water. So before I start speaking about these policies, time on favor, very good, really good. I'm definitely going to speak about that. So before I start speaking about the policies, let's first consider all the things that are included in your prices. Yeah, what is included in your prices? As a service provider or as a yoga business owner, your prices include far more than, a than the tangible thing that you offer. It can be a course, it can be a program, it can be the retreat or location, a physical hour that you spend teaching a class or maybe doing a coaching session with them. But think of all the things that you spend investing, time, money, energy, time, money, and energy in your education, all the years that you spend time, money, and energy building your services, building your business, all the money, the time, and the energy that you still spend today optimizing, revising, creating new services or offerings, your daily tasks as well. Yeah, following up on emails or maybe WhatsApp messages, giving feedback to students, checking their homework and expanding your business. And maybe, maybe there's a lot of administrative tasks. There's a lot of work that happens behind the scenes that are not that one hour you spend with the student or with your client, especially in the beginning of building your business. Really, it's not uncommon that you spend 50 or 60 hours of work a week without getting paid yet. It's an investment in your future, in what you, what you, in what you want your business to be or to look like, right? For the first two or three years, I did not receive a penny for all the work I've put in. And I wanted to take that risk. I'm not complaining about this because I for a thousand percent believe in what I have to offer. I know that what I offer works, but getting out that message, educating people what it is that they need, for example, or help them understand how it can help them. That takes time. It's an investment. It's an investment of time, money, energy. And all of that, you also want to include in your prices. So first of all, what does your price include? And um, what should your price include, right? Remember that it goes much further than a course or a class or a one hour that you spend with your students privately. There's a lot of work, a lot of years of educating yourself or taking courses as well that you want to include in your prices. Now, number two, second thing to consider is how clear is the description of your class or your service. And service can be an offering, like a retreat, a course, a program, a coaching session, whatever it is. But how clear is that description? What exactly do you offer? Who is this offer for? What can your students expect? What is the value of it? Not in terms of money, but the value in terms of the um, what it adds to their lives, what types of problems and challenges will your offer solve with this? Or will it offer a solution to, right? So what type of value does it add to your students' life? And how clear are you about all of these things in your messaging? Your messaging is the way you communicate on your landing page, your product page, your checkout page, your website, all of your social media. How clear are you about this? In other words, do your students know 
exactly what they sign up for or what they invest in. To give you an example, I'm gonna give you an example. A few years ago, I think this was before the pandemic even, before the pandemic, I signed up to an online teacher training because it looked interesting. It looked interesting, but I didn't fully read the landing page. I didn't really read all of the descriptions, the benefits, the things that I would learn. It looked interesting. And it had there on the landing page that if you sign up, um, you could claim a full refund if the content didn't meet your expectations. There was this one little thing and it's, and it's described. If you sign up and the content doesn't meet your expectations, let me put my light back. <laughs> um, you can claim a full refund. Now, from a customer's perspective, this is fantastic because it gives you the opportunity to try it out and see if it works for you. However, as a business owner, and especially looking back on this right now, when you, when you describe that you can claim a refund for whatever reason, Number one, it seems to me as a business owner that the school wants to make money really fast. It's not really the purpose of being in business if you're a yoga teacher, I believe. But that could be a, a something that people believe when they see that. They want to make money fast. Number two, they are not entirely sold on what they offer. Right, they, they might not believe that their offer meets the expectations of the customer, or they are not sure that the offer will help the students or the clients achieve the results that they promise. So they might not fully believe in what it is that they have created. And for that reason, they give you a money back guarantee whenever, for whatever reason. Now, this is very common, right? This is really common. Many yoga teachers, many business owners, they doubt their services meet the customer's expectations. And that's not because they doubt what they create, but most of all, it's fear, right? They fear competition or they fear um, a high demand of the students or the, the clients or they fear they haven't been clear enough about what they offer. They might even fear that their experience or their expertise isn't valuable enough. This, for example, will make that they set low prices or they offer a 13 day money back guarantee. There's a lot of problems with this and I'm gonna give you four right now. Four problems with these things is that people sign up just because, just to check it out, and aren't necessarily serious about investing, about investing money, but also the time to finish your course or your offering. Number two, when people are not serious, they will not do the work, they will not finish your course, they will not achieve the results that you promised, by which your student success rate goes, the student success rate goes down drastically, right? So people that are investing just because then realize I don't really want to do it. Maybe they leave it. Maybe they ask for a money back for their money back. But the student success rate goes down because they don't complete the offer, right? So that's a really big problem because you won't get testimonials, there's no results that you can share, and there's nothing that you can optimize because you're not receiving feedback. So I can go on with the problems. It's a it's like a domino effect, right? One domino falls and it, the, the rest will follow. The, another problem with this is that a 30-day refund policy, anyone can ask for a refund without further questions, meaning that you don't exactly know why they opt out. You can ask, but people that were not serious in the first place will not give you a serious answer, right? Or will not give you constructive feedback on what it is that you can improve. So 
that means that you don't know what to do different, what to change, what to optimize, and how to prevent this from happening again. The last thing, and I think this is really on a personal um, level and also in, in the way really the, uh, that you want to work with people is that if you attract a lot of random and uncommitted students, it will be very demotivating for you because you no longer feel fulfilled or you no longer feel energized and um, excited to work with these people, right? Next to that, if you attract this type of energy in your business, any random that can sign up or join a course and then falls out or doesn't do the work and doesn't complete it, it's really, 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 really hard to break out from that energy, to break out from that cycle or to break out from attracting only these type of people. In other words, all of this is how clear are you on your class or your service description? In other words, what do you need to do to believe in your own offerings for a thousand percent? And how can you optimize your messaging to only attract serious and committed students? And I believe that as a yoga teacher, your numbers, the number of students that join you is not, it really is not about the quantity, but more about the quality of these students. Yeah. So have a look at that, consider that, have a think, maybe write it down for yourself. The third thing that you want to consider is the refund policy. Yeah. Who do you give refunds to? Do you give refunds to anyone that wants their money back? Or do they need to have a valid reason? And if they need a valid reason, what is a valid reason? I'm going to give you some examples. So these questions, um, who do you give refunds to? And when will you give them? Do they need a valid reason? And what are valid reasons? These questions you want to consider thoroughly. It can help to think of yourself as a student or as a customer and think about what would seem fair to you, but do not forget to consider your role as a yoga teacher and more so as a yoga business owner. Yeah, and all the things that happen behind the scenes, your daily tasks, the work you do to prepare, the resources that you create, the support that you offer to your students in class, beyond the class, Everything that you do to run this course, this program, this retreat, all of the things that happen during and around it. Remember that you're not an H&M. Yeah, you're not a retailer. You're not a big shopping center or uh, a clothing shop. You're not an H&M where you can bring a pair, where you can bring back a pair of jeans after you've changed your mind. Really, this you're offering a service and your service are time, right? So to give some examples, a refund policy may be that a student who signs up to something you offer and they opt out, they want to cancel a week before you can give them a 90% refund, 10% you keep as administrative costs. Could be, right? It's an example. You decide for yourself what feels right. Now, say that a student claims a refund a week or even longer after you start a course because they have a serious personal circumstance for which they can't attend. You could keep the same policy, maybe tweak it a little bit. But also think about this. In serious circumstances, Maybe someone passed them away. Maybe they're in hospital. Maybe there is just something, something serious and personal for which they can't attend. What is your policy then? If they have simply changed their mind, but the change their mind because actually um, I decided to, I wanted to go on a holiday or because I invested in something, not really thinking what I was doing. Really, if there's not a valid reason, 
and the course has already started or your program has already started, you could offer maybe a percentage of their investment or you can give them another compensation. Maybe it's extra time for a session. Maybe it's access to a small piece of it. Maybe it's a one-on-one -on -one coaching session. But give them, you can always consider offering a compensation. Now, another example is that there are students that ask for a refund because the, the offering didn't, ex didn't meet the expectations or they are not achieving the results that you promised. Now, going back to how can you optimize your messaging and how can you make sure that you for a thousand percent believe in what you offer, I believe that if you've truly put in the work to create a service and know what you and, and you also know that your offer works and you've been very clear in your messaging but your student isn't happy with the results it's time for you to get into conversation with this particular student ask them about their progress ask them about the work they're putting in and why they're not achieving results are they following your program as planned or are they skipping steps, for example? Are they not doing their homework, for example? Do they not practice what you've taught them? You could always offer additional support, maybe add on a private session or a mentoring uh, session with them. You can offer something extra to help your students to the finish line. Take them by the hand and take them to that finish line. Because if you believe in what you offer and you know it works, then maybe you can do something extra to help out this student, right? I don't think there is a reason for a refund. So this is all to do with your refund policy. Now, what is your cancellation policy? Cancellation or rescheduling policy? How much time before your class or your service takes place can people cancel? or can they ask to reschedule? And how much time prior to starting your class or your service, or maybe it's a module of a course, is it too late? When can they not cancel or reschedule anymore? And in that case, how much of their investment will you take for that cancellation or a rescheduling? How much will you take? The answer to these questions may vary. And if we're speaking, especially they vary if we speak about group or private sessions. When I taught English in uh, language schools, we sometimes had students that really didn't take their class schedule seriously. And they didn't show up at all, or they came in late in class. If you're in a group class, it's very obvious that you can't reschedule. You missed it, that's your responsibility. Um, maybe there is some homework that you can give them to revise what you've done, but you can't repeat that class. Now, I believe that in your own classes, private or group classes, this should be the same. It really should be the same. Your time is super valuable. Just because you're offering a service and because it's to do with people and because you're very often as a yoga teacher, working on a very personal level with people, still people need to respect your time as you are respecting their, their time. Yeah, it's not just the time that you're present in class, everyone. It's also the work that you're doing and that you're putting into preparing your classes, the time that you're reserving to do research, to follow up with your students, to check their homework, there's a lot more that happens at that one hour you are present with them. So personally, I've got a very, very harsh opinion on this, but I have no empathy for random no-shows. I do have empathy for people that have a valid reason. And, that, and again, it can be a very serious personal circumstance for which they couldn't join. But they can always share that with you. And then you can consider what the solution could be, right? For private sessions, 
this can get really personal again. Yeah, it can get really personal. But for private session, you can maintain the policy to, for example, reschedule your sessions within 24 hours prior to the class or prior to the session starts. If your class is at 11 on Wednesday, they can reschedule until Tuesday at 11 a.m., right? 24 hours. We are busy, everyone is busy, and everyone is busy in their own ways. No matter how busy you are, every, you, your time, everyone's time is valuable. And say that you have more students, right? It's very likely that you're teaching more than one person. Um, that this is a time slot that could be could have been reserved by someone else. So you're not wasting only the teacher's time and your own time, but also someone else's because maybe not, they now have to wait because you have that time slot. So for rescheduling, I recommend at least a 24 hour uh, reschedule before the session. Now, if your students, or if your clients don't already respect that, right? If they don't already respect your time and everything that you need to do to prepare for these classes, you can educate them on that. Reschedule 24 hours before class. And if not, you can take part of their payment or take their full payment. To compensate, you can always consider giving them something extra. And it can be an additional 15 minutes to their next session. It could be that your proofreading documents that they have written that they want to revise with you. It could be that you um, maybe record something for them if you already knew that what you were going to do. Maybe record a 15 minute overview of the things that you wanted to share with them. So you can consider a compensation but I would not, if it's 10 minutes before your class and they don't show up and they have no valid reason, I would not give them a refund or reschedule for free. Again, if you welcome this energy into your business, into your way of working, your business politics, it's really, 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 really hard to break out from. And this will happen again and again with more and more people. So allow yourself to. Own your boundaries, really. Own your own values and your boundaries as a person, as a teacher, and as a business owner. All right. I hope that this was useful. So for the people that have been, that join us a little bit later, I spoke about money back and cancellation policies. And I would really love for you to watch it again from the beginning because I explained all of the things that are included in your prices, all the things that you want to consider, including in your prices, how to prevent people from asking for money back by being really, 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 really clear in your descriptions of the courses or the programs that you offer. Also, what to do in terms of your refund policies and what to do in terms of your cancellation and your rescheduling policies. So if you joined later or if you're listening to this later and you didn't get everything, watch it again. Um, watch it from the beginning. And I would love to invite you to something because this year. I'll be hosting a pilot course, a very first course to help you create and set up your own business. So in that course, we'll definitely look at how to set up your money back and your cancellation policies, but also how to create your offerings, how to optimize your visibility and how to attract students. Yeah, there's a lot of things that will be included in there. And if you would like to find out what type of yoga business suits you or teaching business or any type of service business, uh, take the quiz to find out what your most ideal business model is. Yes, yeah, so and there's a quiz. What is your what type of yoga business, yoga or wellness business suits you? And you can find it in the link in my bio. Um, and in the description here on Facebook as well. So there's a quiz for you there to find out your most ideal business model. Um, 
face-to-face -face can be different to online due to transportation time. In turn, what do you mean different? Because true, there's transportation time and transportation time you can include in your prices too, right? You can include that in your prices too. I don't think it's different in terms of teaching online or in, um, in terms of your time, right? Reserving time for this person. But I would, would include it in your prices. Would definitely include it in your prices. Does anyone have questions about this? I forgot to ask. Does anyone have questions about these things? Let me double check Facebook because I see we've got some notifications. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Not yet established, right? So that's not the, the not yet established. So Catherine, I hope that this will be useful for you. It gives you lots to consider. Um, especially with international classes as well, right? Time zone differences. We need to have these very clear. Um, but that's another point. I will speak about that another time. I don't see any questions coming in. So watch the replay if you haven't seen it all. If you have questions, always feel free to write to me. Send me a message on Instagram or Facebook or my email at annie at engaunite.com. Don't forget to take the quiz. What type of business suits you to find out about your most ideal business model? And if you would like, I still offer private coaching as well. So if you're ready to create or to build and expand your business, feel free to book a discovery call. It's a 30 minute call in which we can speak about your plans or your vision your goals for your business, create a plan for you and see if we could work together as well in the future. So I can help you out with all of the things that you want to achieve in your business. All right, everybody, I will see all of you very soon. Next week, there won't be a live session. All right, so next week, the 5th of the 7th of June, there is no live session, but the week after will continue. And we're going to keep speaking about all of your teaching skills, business skills, and anything that you would like to learn about. So if there are topics that you would like to hear or learn more about, write me a message as well, and I will add it to my calendar. That's all for now. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see all of you in two weeks, right? 14th of June. Mwah. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>